Today I'm going to be tier ranking all 45 mystery thriller books I read in 2023. The tiers are pretty self-explanatory but just in case I'll give you a like 20 second rundown. At the top we have a new favorite. These are my new favorite mystery thriller books. Next we have Great Not Life Changing. These are books that were great. They did what they set out to do but they didn't change my life and it might be because I've already read a book that did the same thing but I still enjoyed it. Then we have Totally Fine. These books we're just okay. I forgot that you existed. These are books that I cannot believe I read this year because they are just wiped from my brain. And then at the bottom I have Don't Recommend. These are just books that I didn't enjoy and I would not really recommend them to anyone really. I think the way these got uploaded is in backwards order of the order I read them. So I think we're gonna go from like most recently read to what I read way earlier in the year. So that'll be interesting. First up we have The Maid's Diary. This one I would say is great, not life-changing. I recently read it because it was nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards and I actually had a pretty good time with it but wasn't like a new favorite or anything. It was a four star. Then we have Don't Let Her Stay and that one right now is totally fine. If I hadn't read it so recently, it might go into I Forgot You Existed because it's kind of forgettable, but it was fine when I read it. I ended up giving it a three star. The Coworker by Frieda McFadden, I do not recommend. That was a one star. I did not like that one. Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. I thought this one was great. It didn't end up getting a five star, but I think I am gonna put it in this top category because it was kind of life-changing because it was an experimental book I was reading, hoping that the hunch that I have about thinking I'm going to be interested in cozy mysteries was correct. And then I read that book, A Cozy Mystery, and I did like it. And now it's kind of changing my reading a little bit. So it's gonna go in the top. Next we have The Eden Test. And this is kind of another one, like if I hadn't just read it, I would probably have already forgot that it existed, but I literally just read it <laughs> in November, so I do still remember it, but I don't really recommend it. I think if you want a book like that, uh, probably just read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. I didn't really like the direction that the Eaton test went. The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. This one I really, really enjoyed. It was a five star and it's going in that top tier. It wasn't transformational. Like it didn't do anything that other mystery thrillers aren't, but the writing was so good. The character building, so good. I was so immersed in that story and it was just something I really enjoyed this year. Then we have Puzzle Master and this, I kind of like, forget that I read because it's just so random <laughs> looking at everything else. Like I don't hear anyone else ever talk about this book, but I would say I thought it was fine. It had a really cool concept, but for my personal taste, it just didn't deliver all the way. Next we have What Lies in the Woods. And I did not like this one as much as a lot of other people did. I gave it a two star. I think it's fine, but I just heard it be hyped up a lot because a lot of people were really enjoying it and then I read it and I did not have that same experience. So I'm just gonna say it's fine, but it wasn't great for me. It wasn't horrible for me. I was just a little bit disappointed in what I got from it. Falling by TJ Newman, this one was a 4.5 star and I feel like it was really quite good, but I don't feel like I can put it in a new favorite necessarily. I'm gonna put it in great, not life-changing. Really fast paced action thriller. It's a good time. I would say it's a good airplane read because you could read it really quickly, but it's uh, about an airplane potentially crashing. So you don't wanna be reading that on your airplane. Maybe if you like took a road trip somewhere, <laughs> you could read it during that vacation. The Drowning Woman, I really enjoyed. That one is a new favorite that I found this year. And I've read a couple other books from Robin Harding. So I was just really surprised that this one stood out so much because typically I think her books are just like in that totally fine or great category, but this one I really, really enjoyed. Stone Cold Fox, I kind of forgot you existed. This was one of my book club picks this year and I honestly am trying really, really hard to remember anything about that book and I can't. I think I read it in February, so maybe these aren't organized in reverse order. Maybe that I just had a couple batch that were recent, but that book, has completely wiped itself from my memory. I know I gave it a two star, but I don't remember anything about it. I Will Find You by Harlan Coben. This was great, not life-changing, just a really solid, fast-paced thriller. Look Closer by David Ellis. I feel the same. I thought it was great. It had a really fun twist in it, but it was just too long to be a five star. <laughs> it didn't need to be that long. I wish it would have been shorter. Would have packed a better punch, but it was still great. I do recommend it. The Chain by Adrian McKinty. This one was a five star this year, a new favorite. And I've had two five star reads from Adrian McKinty because I also really love The Island last year. The Chain is an older one. I think it came out in 2018-ish, but I had a lot of fun with it. I was really surprised by it. And I just really love Adrian McKinty's writing. Next is None of This Is True. And for me, this one ended up being totally fine, kind of similar to What Lies in the Woods, but I ended up more on the enjoyment spectrum of None of This Is True. 
I just saw a lot of rave reviews for None of This Is True. And then I ended up feeling fine about it. Not bad, like I did with What Lies in the Woods, because What Lies in the Woods was a two, none of this is true. I ended up giving like a 3.5, 3.75, somewhere like that. It was just okay for me. The Other Mistress by Shonora Williams. This book, I was hooked in the beginning, and then I did not like the direction that it went and what it did with the twist. So I don't recommend this one, but I do wanna check out more from this author because I have heard good things about their works. And I did like the writing and I was pulled into the story. I just didn't like what they did with the twist in that one. So it's not one I find myself wanting to recommend. The Spare Room, this book, oh, this book. I think it's fine for the right reader. I didn't know what I was getting myself into with that one. And it's much more of a romantic suspense than it was like a dark thriller with a little bit of taboo romance elements to it. I think if I had known what I was getting myself into, I may have had a better time. If you like authors like Taryn Fisher or Geneva Rose, that is the type of book that this was. The Drift by CJ Tudor I thought was great, not life-changing. I've read uh, everything from CJ Tudor, I believe, all of her novels and then her short story collection. I really enjoy her stuff. Um, the Drift, really solid, not necessarily a new favorite for me. The Last Word is a new favorite for me. That one was so fun, so silly, so ridiculous. Liar, Dreamer, Thief is a book that I kind of forget that I read. And I feel like that is the only place it really belongs because I don't remember where the story went. It had an interesting premise. It pulled me in. I thought the writing was so good. I remember really liking the writing. I can't remember where the book goes and what happens. And like the second half of it. I have like no memory of that. I would keep an eye out for more from the author in the future because I do remember the writing was good. My Murder by I think Katie Williams is the author. This one I'm gonna say was... I'm gonna say it was great, not life-changing. I didn't know what type of book this was going to be when I picked it up. I thought it was going to be like a cozy, goofy, silly, little murder mystery kind of time. It's a speculative book about this woman who died, but then somehow she has come back to life and she is solving her own murder. That sounded really cutesy, but it actually was a very serious, dark, heavy book. But once I kind of realized what kind of book it was, I really appreciated what it was doing and it had some really unique scenes in it and some really unique concepts that I thought were done really well. Everyone in my family has killed someone. This one, it's just been so long since I read it that I feel like I have to put it in great, not life-changing. Like immediately after I read it, I might've called it a new favorite, but I just need to reread it. So right now it's gonna go in great. It's just been such a long time. I wanna reread it anyway because the sequel's coming out soon. And maybe after I reread it, I'll have a different opinion, but it's kind of like a, cozy, traditional feeling murder mystery with a really witty, fun character that breaks the fourth wall with you. So I really liked the voice of it. I liked the concept. It's just been a bit of time and I need a little bit of a refresher. I Know Who You Are by Alice Feeney. I don't recommend this book, but more importantly, I forgot it existed. <laughs> I always look at this and I'm like, oh my God, I did read that book. I can't believe I read that book. Like I feel like I completely wiped it from my mind because I hated the ending of it so much that I have just completely like wiped it. It's gone. I don't know who you are. You are gone from my memory. The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldust. This one, I don't really recommend. I mean, I only give it like a two star, so it's not horrible, but I just feel like there are better thrillers that do this kind of thing. And um, it's just not a favorite of mine. It didn't feel like it was very good. All the characters kind of felt the same. Not a standout for me. Not So Perfect Strangers. This one I thought was great. It's another kind of strangers on a train retelling, fun thriller. Did all the right things, hit all the right beats. Had a good time. The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. Also, I thought this was great. I just really enjoy Sally Hepworth's writing. She writes these more family drama, mystery thriller type of books. She's like carved out her own little niche where you always know what you're gonna get and it's always solid. They're always good. You must remember this. Um, it would be really funny if I put it in and I forgot that you existed, but I remember this book. I do remember it and I think it's fine. I think it was totally fine. It's a good one to read in the winter months. It's just kind of like an inheritance thriller, piecing together what happened in the past to how it's connected to now. Someone died, did someone murder them, family drama kind of stuff. And it was just, it was a good time. The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz was a new favorite of mine this year. Absolutely loved that. Read it very early in the year, but it has made a big impact and it just stays in my memory. That's when I would also reread. It was a good time. The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. This one I thought was fine. The character building in some of it, really good. But in general, it was just a fine mystery thriller. The Stranger Upstairs, I don't really recommend. 
Didn't really like that one. Zero Days, I thought this one was pretty good. Um, I think I'm gonna put it in great. It's more than totally fine. I don't know if I would say it's great, but I'm gonna round up and put it in this great, not life-changing. I thought it was something a little different from Ruth Ware. That was pretty fun. I thought the character building was really, really well done, very realistic. And it was kind of like this action survival thriller that made you wanna keep reading to see what was going to happen. So it was, it was okay. It was just better than fine. Far less than life-changing, a little bit less than great, but we're gonna let it sit there. The only one left, I thought this one was also pretty great. It was a fun time. Nice comeback for Riley Sager after I have been not enjoying some of his more recent books and uh, I had a fun time with it. The Getaway, I kind of forgot that I read this book, but it was a good time. It's a YA thriller slash horror. I could put it in either video. I do a horror video of tier ranking as well. Maybe it fit better there. It's already here, so we're just gonna let it be here. <laughs> but just know it, it could be kind of in either category. Fun idea, fun writing, fun story. It's probably one of the like three to four YA books I read this year. I didn't read very many, but it was a good time. The Last Party by Claire McIntosh. I did like this one. I'm gonna call it great. It was one of my book club picks and I just still can remember it. Like I still remember being in the story. I had fun with the mystery. It's like a small town detective whodunit kind of mystery. And there is a sequel coming out. I thought it'd be out by now. I feel like it keeps getting pushed back. I really want to read it. And if I really want to read a sequel, that's a good sign that I thought a book was great because I never really liked to read sequels. <laughs> Next is The Housemaid's Secret. I thought this one was fine. I was actually revisiting this book the other day. I made a video dedicated to this book and The Housemaid. And I talked about if The Housemaid's Secret is worth reading, if you enjoyed The Housemaid or not, like should you keep going in the series and pick up The Housemaid's Secret. And I fully spoiled The Housemaid's Secret in that video and I went back and I watched it and I forgot how twisty that book was and like that must have been complicated to construct and revealing all of that and going through that journey was fun but in general the book was just fine for me. Murder Your Employer, the longer title for this is something about the McMaster's Guide to Murder or something. <sighs> Here's the thing, I do forget that this book existed but I did think it was totally fine. But I think the concept was great, but I don't think it fully executed the way it needed to, so it's going to end up in totally fine. It's a unique book, it's a unique mystery thriller, has a very cool setup, very cool voice. I wanted to love it, but I just didn't feel like it did everything it could have done to be great. All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. This one I'm gonna say is as like a mystery thriller, like a crime story, it's just fine for me. But the writing is very good. The character building is very good. So I'm going to put it in great, not life changing. Also, because I just know so many people love that book. Like everyone agrees that book is great. For me, I think I gave it a 3.5. But I was there for the mystery. And I didn't feel like the main character was pursuing the mystery enough in the way that I like to watch my characters pursue mysteries. And then when it was solved, it was not super satisfying to me the way the mystery was constructed. So personally, I kind of think it's just fine as a mystery, but I'm just gonna, we're, we'll round it up. You know, we'll give it, we'll give it that little boost because I know a lot of people love it. Next up is Going Dark by Melissa De La Cruz. This is another YA. And I thought it was pretty good when I read it. I gave it a four star. I kind of forget that I read it because I just don't think about these YA books a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in totally fine because it didn't leave much of an impact. It wasn't incredibly unique. I feel like I have seen the story done in a similar way before, but if you like YA mysteries, I thought it was a good time. Next we have The Dinner Guest by B.P. Walter, which is also going to go in totally fine. I thought I was gonna love this book when I first started reading it because it started so strong, but then it did the thing that sometimes mystery thrillers do where it starts strong and then the whole like middle portion is just kind of saying and doing the same thing over and over and over again and then you get the resolution and you're like oh if only the middle could have moved the story more it would have been so good but it didn't and so it ended up just being fine. Next we have The Angel Maker. I really enjoyed this when I read it but I don't remember it much like I kind of did forget it existed but I did give it a four star when I read it so I'm just gonna call it totally fine but that does feel a little wrong because I really can't remember much about this book outside of the concept you know what 
we're gonna stand true to that. We're gonna put it in I forgot that you existed. And it's not because it's bad. It's just not super memorable to me, which is how all of Alex North's books are. I always can remember the general concept. I don't really remember much about the actual story. Next up, we have The Fury by Alex Michaelides. This is an arc I read. This book's coming out in early 2024. And I thought it was pretty great, not life-changing. I really liked the voice and the writing of this one. The story is not overly unique, but the way the story is told to you, I thought was very fun. So I thought it was great. Next we have Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney. And this one, I feel like with a mystery thriller, if I can't remember the reveal at the end, then it makes sense for it to be, I forgot that you existed because I can't remember where the story goes. So now we have two Alice Feeney books in this category. She does not create very memorable stories for me sometimes. There's some that I do remember a lot, like Daisy Darker, I remember a lot, but Good Bad Girl, I mean, I just read this and I think like August or September and I can't remember much about the story at all. I also didn't like it when I read it. I gave it a two star, but I don't remember any of my reasoning or any of the things that happen in the story. Next we have Wrong Place, Wrong Time, which I thought was pretty great. This has had a lot of really good reviews over the years and it's a pretty solid, fun, speculative mystery thriller. The House on the Pines, I also thought was pretty great. This one I feel like doesn't have the best reviews, but I liked it. <laughs> it kind of goes in a weird direction. I can see why that wouldn't work for everyone, but I really enjoyed the writing style of this one. I really enjoyed like the tone and atmosphere of the story. And then I was surprised by the end. I thought it was cool what it did. I also listened to this book on audiobook, which may have enhanced my experience a bit getting really into the atmosphere and the tone of the story so I'd recommend the audiobook I had a good time with it and lastly we have Where Darkness Blooms which is one of the other YA books I read this year that I forgot existed <laughs> it was fine when I read it but I don't know I've just read a lot of other stories that do similar things especially YA mystery thriller horror books that follow a lot of these same concepts Ooh, actually I remember now what happens in the end. You know what? I'm gonna say I don't recommend it <laughs> because I wouldn't. If you wanted a book like this, I would recommend other things before I recommend this. I hated the way that book ended. I thought it was pretty dumb, which is unfortunate because it has an excellent cover, but yeah, I didn't like that one. And um, that is it for all of my mystery thrillers tier ranked. We had a lot of things in the great category, actually. I'm pretty impressed by how many books ended up there. Only six ended up being new favorites, six out of 45 were new favorite mystery thriller. I always wish it was more, but I'm still happy to see so many books be fine and up. There's a couple books that weren't memorable. There's a couple books that I really didn't like, but for the most part, I enjoyed the majority of what I read this year. A good amount I thought were great. And I had a couple nice standout favorites for me personally. So let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this tier ranking, if anything surprised you, if you're planning on picking up any books that you saw me mention based on it, or if I helped save you from picking up any books that you thought you might wanna pick up, but now you're thinking maybe you won't. <laughs> but that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.